Ronan O'Gara is a player that I had to grow up watching win everything and obviously destroy my team nearly single-handedly on some occasions but he was a player who led at least the country I support to a good bit of success. He was part of the, the first batch of professional players coming through in Ireland alongside your David Wallace, your Shane Horgan, Brian O'Driscoll, all these kind of players coming in and around the same generation. Not all starting at the same time, but they're coming through. Underneath, believe it or not, the tutelage of Warren Gatland. If you have only been a rugby supporter the last 10, 15 years, you might assume that he's only ever existed in Wales, but he has actually managed Ireland at one point in his career and was relatively successful in transferring us over to professional era which in turn led to giving us players such as this man. Why was Ronald O'Gar so special is a question that we're going to answer throughout this video and of course why does he stand out even in our current period we have Johnny Sexton before him we had Jackie Kyle, Tony Ward, Eric Elwood, we had David Humphreys at the time. Ireland weren't short of outstanding tens of all different styles, running styles, kicking styles and being a master of all but what Ronald O'Gar was able to do in the game of rugby and what he gave Ireland in terms of how we see the sport in this country is absolutely amazing which is what we're going to actually go into now. I'm going to go do a quick run through of his career so you can learn about what he did at what stages he did it at and the important moments that make him what he is and why we in Ireland and Munster think of him the way we do and why there is even a good argument to have of why he could be one of the best tens ever produced in world rugby. Massive statement, I know what the players are out there, but in terms of significance for a country, he is up there with the best of them. Like most players in Ireland, uh, they generally go through the school system and club system in the country in the domestic game. Ron O'Gara here is no different. He went through Presentation Brothers School, where he actually won Junior Cup in 92, and a Senior Cup then in 94, 95 season. And you can see him sitting in the winning picture right in the middle, with some other notable faces in that picture, along with Peter Stringer, Mick O'Driscoll and of course Declan Kidney was actually the director of rugby around the school at the time. So it just goes to show that Declan Kidney has actually been a massive part of Ron O'Gara's career from start to finish. After school he moves to play with UCC for a season but then fully joins Cork Con after that in turn he's won AIL medals in under 20 he's won the AIL out and out and he's won a Munster Senior League with Cork Con. and then he started beginning to get his clutches on the Munster jersey this is like I said during the first transition to professional rugby player but he has admitted himself and other players have done at the start of professional rugby you're counted as a full-time rugby player and that's what is down on the contract but you're being paid well below 10k a year not exactly livable wages so he was lucky at the age he was doing it and the way it was was coming about that he was able to be a student while doing this obviously students are renowned for not having to live off a lot of money so being down in Cork close to his parents I imagine this all helped a lot and the money became no object rather than the dream of being a professional sportsman in the sport that he was clearly very talented at. In his time between Cork Con and UCC I could find I don't know how reliable the evidence is but he's actually scored over 750 points between the two clubs in 70 games well just under 70 games he played 69 games but just imagine what a disaster it would have been to play against this kind of player who would just consistently peg you back like he did in the professional scene after school we obviously move on to his first season playing for Munster he made his debut against Connacht and immediately showing what he's capable of doing he scores 19 points another notable player he made his debut beside was David Wallace who also went on to have a fantastic career but this was just the first of many for Ron Lugar and he's already shown he's well capable of kicking points against what would be at the time not as difficult opposition as what Connacht are today and of course later that year he would go on to make his Heineken Cup debut scoring 15 points against the Harlequins much diff more difficult opposition not a lot of discrepancy in the amount of points he scored he is helped by Munster having a very very strong outfit but with just turning professional in Ireland and for a young 10 think of it now looking around the place at 10s at this age he was only 20 19 years of age at this point in his career when he's coming on for debut slotting points think of of how we look at debuts for that age of a player now at this stage and who would show it as a talented 10 in that age bracket are you looking at Roman Intimac are you looking closer to home at Ben Healy Jack Crowley none of these had had 
as much pull on them at the earliest part of their careers. Intimac probably a little close, but you're already looking at a class talent at this age. So we're already starting to see from his time in UCC and his Corcon and Munster that we have a playmaker here on our hands, a guy who kicks very well and who doesn't seem to be affected by the big occasion because he has said so himself. He feels that, that is his job. He is the kicker. That is entirely his responsibility. So he will put the hours in to do it and it often shows. We move on a couple of years he's playing obviously very frequently with Munster and we're now looking at a guy who could possibly replace uh, the David Humphreys who is currently playing for Ireland and is no bad 10 himself obviously. Under management of Warren Gatland he decides to pick him in the squad and gets his Ireland debut against Italy A first and then onto that Six Nations he is able to make his debut against Scotland. So Scotland's at the very start of career and in the game he missed his very first attempt at kicking. Most players would start wilting on under pressure like this and you have seen consistently some kickers can just continuously have a bad day but he picked himself up brushed himself on off and continued on in the game and ended up getting two pens and two conversions in a 44-22 win. I think he came off at about the 60th minute but that was just a brief showing in what we are getting with this player. And in that season he'd already made himself into such a figure for Munster. He was clearly their starting out half. Uh, he started the Heineken Cup final against Northampton Saints where they lost by one point. He himself missed the first four shots he had a goal and he himself in a quote said he had a big role in them losing that day. So that was a massive hit to the confidence for the young 22 year old at the time where he was entrusted with such a big part and a big role in a massive club like Munster who were the leading province in Ireland at the time. And it proves the point that people's memories tend to be short with these kind of things because oftentimes people will bring up certain players who are having a bit of a shaky game young players get put under microscopic pressure at the moment when it is purely them learning their craft clearly a player like this has gone through similar situations of missing four shots a goal when they only lose by one point in the end it is clearly down to him at that case and he has to get out of his head whereas nowadays we see players can make certain mistakes and miss an easy chance a goal drop a ball give away silly penalties all going through the career this is when he was 22 years of age and he still was able to go on to become the player that he is regarded in today so his career moves on from this disappointment at this point in his career he continues getting caps for ireland who are notably underachievers at this point with this batch of talent that we now have your shane horgan brian driscoll gordon darcy wallace quinlan paul o'connell all these players have now come through and we're winning nothing munster losing the heineken cup finals Leinster not kicking off is all not going to get her but Ron Rogar is consistently performing consistently taking over starting to build relationships with players like Shane Horgan with players like Peter Stringer and it's all building on top of each other and this gets noticed on the Lions tour in 2001 he gets to go as one of the options at 10 now he is obviously behind Neil Jenkins at this stage and Johnny Wilkinson but what he did bring back from that tour although not getting to play in a test match was he had quoted to, to figure out and when working with Johnny Wilkinson is that he, they have defined what work rate is he found a new level of professionalism Johnny Wilkinson was well known for how methodical he was and how much effort he put into being good at what he did he made sure his left was as good as his right in passing tackling kicking everything and the amount of hours he put in Ronald Gare had not seen something like that before because he'd become the lead performer for a Munster a Munster team who obviously had very very good players but had come from the amateur era he's in an Ireland team and only starting to get the professionalism together this is now going to a Johnny Wilkinson who's obviously at a complete different standard and Neil Jenkins who was one of the most talented tens of his time and another leading point scorer worldwide whose records are still up there today. So he takes this information he, he's learned and obviously tries to become a better player himself and in 2002 at the age of 24 it is beginning to click. Ireland gets a famous win against Australia where he scores all 18 points in the 18-9 win against them uh, but in again Munster get to the Heine Cup final against Leicester but Leicester Tigers had their Martin Johnson style players it was that era of dominance for them and they lost that game 15 points to 9 it's all starting to come together and next year is going to be the year where hopefully it all comes together and hopefully Ronald Garrett can put to the test of all this talent that Munster and Ireland are putting together with him guiding them 
making the plays and being essentially a quarterback for a very talented set of backs and a very talented set of forwards. So we go through the next season, Munster are playing fantastically well in both what is now known as the URC or the Pro 14 or the Pro 16, whatever we call it nowadays, it changes every now and then. But at the time it was called the Celtic League. They were doing well in that, becoming one of the favourites to win. And then in the Heineken Cup, they were doing relatively well throughout the group stages. But it went through to the last game of the pool stages, qualify for the quarterfinal against Gloucester. What they needed in terms of point difference was a, was 27 points or more. So Gloucester turned up to Munster thinking, this is going to be easy, we just need to secure our own qualification spot, we're doing well, we're strong in the English Premiership, there's no way these are going to score four tries and beat us by 27 points. But what came was Peter Stringer and Ronald Gara absolutely dictating the play. They were involved in nearly every score and really carried this Munster team to a shock win which is now known as the miracle match but not only did they have to win by a certain amount of points they left it until the very last play where Ron O'Gara scored the conversion to bring it to that 27 point margin now if you were to go onto Wikipedia like I did when researching this sort of stuff it reads as O'Gara's last minute conversion against Gloucester on 18th of January 2003 helped Munster to a 27 point victory which leaves you wondering why was the last minute conversion to lead to a 27 point victory so important it's not like they were winning by the skin of their teeth but in terms of qualification points difference bonus points it all mattered that day to bring him to a quarter final and later on that season obviously Munster went on to complete and win the URC the Celtic League the Magners League whatever you'd want to call it right now and this is when an interesting opportunity arose for uh, Ronald Gara allegedly is when Miami Dolphins an NFL franchise had actually approached Ronald Gara to be their kicker for the game because obviously he has shown throughout his career already this is a very very specific skill that he is great at he puts a lot of hours in and he rarely misses so every kick in front of the post for him in nfl would be ideal now how much truth there are to these offers and how much money would be on the table for him he never took it he never entertained it i remember it being on the news at the time but god knows maybe just an american guy came to watch a rugby game before with him in it and that uh, is what they're talking about and then uh, during that year he got called up to his first world cup with ireland uh, he he played across all five games as starting 10 and scored 30 points across these games and unsurprisingly or surprisingly ireland lost in the quarter final that year so good news and bad news but alas with Munster just ticking over over the next season 2004 the first time we get to get hold on the international honours in Ronald Gary's career with the triple crown and the first of the golden generation to keep mentioning there were so many near misses in the past whether you lose to England or, or what have you but in this uh, season of the Six Nations they had dispatched after losing to France they had dispatched Wales with particular ease if you're going by the match report but I'm sure it felt very different and then it came to world champions England who were suffering what ended up being quite clearly the World Cup hangover and with Clive Woodward then struggling and then inevitably losing his job but Ireland really took the game to them Ireland ended up beating England in Twickenham and that was the first time Ireland had won in Twickenham since 1994 so that is 10 years and it was England's first loss in Twickenham since the 1999 World Cup where they lost to New Zealand so this is something that doesn't happen very often and it was a very special day and again it was with O'Gara running the show and although he missed his very first opportunity at post we ended up being able to come back and finally take the lead in what was a pretty nervy affair throughout and then to fully complete the triple crown we were able to beat Scotland at home which was a bit more convincing scoreline a 37 16 this is just a sign of things to inevitably come for ireland with this great successful bunch of people getting used to winning and now eventually getting the monkey off their back and being able to win a triple crown and nonetheless beating an england team who were just 
Crown World Champions. And as that year went on, when we played South Africa, he scored all the points in a famous victory against them. And then he scores a last minute winner against Argentina in that same autumn series. As you're starting to see what kind of player he is. And then he wins an individual award of RTE Player of the Year. So it's just a, a Sports Person of the Year award. Just to show how important he was to Irish sport that year. 2005 rolls around and we get to go to another Lions store, another selection. But unfortunately, once again, Stephen Jones and Johnny Wilkinson are the preferred duo throughout the Lions tour itself. This was a very unfortunately the one that is most renowned for Dan Carter's arrival on the rugby scene and his then domination of that tour. And Ronald Gar himself played no tests again. 2006 rolls around and we have now a career defining season in the Heineken Cup. I'm sure most of you remember it. Throughout this season he became a pivotal player for Munster yet again. Consistently starting, consistently scoring points. Uh, conversions, drop kicks, whatever you like, he's doing it. They get to the semi final and meet a very excited Leinster team who are finally starting to put the pieces together. We're starting to use a Brian O'Driscoll, a Shane Horgan to their full effect. This looks like the year Leinster could start breaking on and stop being the underperformers that they're known for being. But Munster were having none of it that day. And not just Munster, it felt like Ron Magara on his own was out to get Leinster that day. I'm sure most Munster fans who were alive around the time have very fond memories of such a match where Ron Magara ended up handing off Malcolm O'Kelly, which if you weren't aware of who Malcolm O'Kelly is, he was a big brute of a man. And when Ronan O'Gara hands you off to go score a try under the sticks, it's not going to be a good day for you. Which brought Munster straight to that high cup final as favourites. They've just beaten their local rivals. Ronan O'Gara clearly on song, the relationships around the park just all working out, just being perfect. And he goes on to play Be a Ritz in that final where he scores 13 of the 23 points that led to Munster's first Heineken Cup final victory, their first European honours and in turn O'Gara's first European honours after their third attempt at making the final. And they put on top of that for a successful season. They won the Triple Crown and beat England in Twickenham again and he overtook David Humphreys as leading point scorer for Ireland a nice little personal accolade that I'm sure he didn't really put much pass on until you know after the end of his career where he can look back on what he was able to achieve. 2007 rolls around and there's no club games of note to speak of. A quiet year especially by Munster standards but Ireland it was the ball was still rolling the momentum was going and Ireland won another triple crown in that Six Nations. Not only that, but O'Gara had quite a standout season in that, where he scored all the points in the win against Scotland. The relationship between him and Shane Horgan continued, and if you're not understanding what this relationship was, Ron O'Gara was capable of these fantastic crossfield kicks where he could land it on a penny from across the field, and Shane Horgan knew when to read those lines perfectly. And Shane Horgan being the bigger version of a wing, not renowned for his you know super fast pace, much like what Keith Earls would be today or something like that. Shane Horgan was a big, strong winger. And if you put that ball up in the air, there's a 90% chance he's going to catch it if you put it in the right position. And Ron O'Gara was the man who was capable of putting it in the right position. So that was a weapon that was used to great effect throughout their time together. And then this team, with all the momentum, all the excitement built up, all they're going into this World Cup with big hopes. They're in a they're in a group with Georgia and Namibia, thinking this is going to be not so much easy, but it's going to be a direct route to a quarter final, and then the quarter final. That's where the issues are going. But this was a World Cup that was just that just did not go right. They ended up in the end struggling to beat Namibia, struggling to beat Georgia and obviously losing to France and Argentina and didn't even make it past the group stages which was not ideal for an Irish team with grand hopes to make our first semi-final which I know don't go on about it we still haven't made one it will happen in my lifetime please God. 2008 rolls around we have another successful season with Munster again kicking points again setting up plays being the quarterback being a consistent world-class player to make it all the way to the Heineken Cup final again 
against Toulouse. They've been here before now, they're experienced, they know what to do. O'Gara then goes and scores 11 of the 16 points to win that final. If you're seeing a trend here is that he's showing up on the big days, on the big games. He is knocking over points. When you have him in your team, you are not afraid to go for points from wherever in the park because he's so consistent. He's like clockwork, he will just knock it over. So any big victory for Munster, big victory for Ireland, tournament wins during this time, a lot of the pressure was down on O'Gara to score those extra points and he's come from a place where obviously he had missed the first kicks in some games he missed the initial four in that Heineken Cup final a while ago and now he's gone on to be the majority point scorer in both of the Heineken Cup finals and demolishing Leinster in a semi-final not only two years ago so we're seeing the growth of this player to become one of the most clutch players that Irish rugby or world rugby has ever produced although there's probably you know one or two other clutch moments you can think of that might be able to beat his in terms of representing a country and carrying that weight upon your shoulders there was no other man than Ronan O'Gara at the time to be able to do that and despite all the special players he had outside him it was often him who was able to keep those scoreboards ticking over which is one of those more important things during Test Match Rugby. The 08-09 season comes along and this is a massive season in terms of Irish rugby, in terms of Munster rugby, in terms of O'Gara's career and it, you're probably aware of at least one of the things happening in this season but numerous things had kicked off during this year which had caused a bit of a shift in Irish rugby. So for a personal accolade, Ron O'Gara was actually the first player in history to hit over a thousand points in the Heineken Cup. He also in that Six Nations, which is probably one of the most influential Six Nations during my lifetime in terms of how many people had started to follow rugby, he actually overtook Johnny Wigginson as top scorer in the Six Nations competition. And we all know how that Six Nations ended up going for Ireland. There was that famous Wales game in the Millennium Stadium where we never thought we stood a chance. Well, we did, obviously. We come from beating France, England, Scotland, Italy. We'd done it all apart from the last game. And this is something Ireland hadn't done, as Royal Nugent famously said, in 61 years. And a play had just unfolded in front of the eyes of O'Gara and he probably couldn't believe his luck that's something he had done time and time again for different wingers throughout his career he's done it for Keith Earls at this stage he's done it for Shane Horgan numerous numerous times now Tommy Bow is running that wing line and Ron O'Gara is able to do a simple cross field kick and the bounce just goes the right way lands in Tommy Bow's hands and he's able to go in and score that famous try which then sets up for one of the more nervy finishes in Irish rugby Stephen Jones able to go up and score the drop goal and then constantly working it back then stringers on the pitch dictating tempo being able to set up in place again another situation these two have been in time and time again so it's all building up throughout the career building the relationships with certain players building the use of certain moves and certain plays is all starting to come together now in the 75th minute then Stringer has set up Ronan O'Gara, O'Gara kick, drop goal attempt for the Grand Slam. It was at stake, I believe. And this was the kick to set up Ireland's one of Ireland's greatest ever victories in rugby. And probably for anyone around that time, it has been way more dramatic than anything we've experienced since. Maybe it was the culmination of how long it had been since we'd done it, how many failures we had in terms of only winning triple crowns, but consistently being out bullied by maybe France to different Six Nation victories and England being able to bully us and Wales being notably the better of the sides. But then Ireland were finally able to achieve what their talent had been building up to in such a time. That was not the only thing to happen during this season. This was the season Johnny Sexton was starting to come on the scene for Leinster this is the first season Felipe Contepomi was starting to fade away and Sexton starting to come on due to injuries and they played that famous Munster game where Gordon Darcy scores a try in the corner and Sexton just starts screaming in O'Gara's face after missing the tackle on Darcy and O'Gara had said himself it felt like that scream was Johnny Sexton saying I'm here now and I'm here to stay so now O'Gara has a rivalry pushing him for that 10 jersey and that November rolls around. Sexton's getting his first start against Fiji. With now they're starting to look at the new. The newspaper's starting to change in tone. Now it's Sexton's the new guy. O'Gara's old. It sounds familiar because that's exactly what's happening now with Sexton. This will repeat itself consistently. No matter how good a player you are, there's always a next new thing. And this is exactly what was happening to Ron O'Gara during this point to the point of his career. But due to his performances and Ireland's performances, he got to go to another Lions tour, and this was the tour in his head. This was the tour it was down in South Africa this is going to be the one where he gets to play and 
he gets to show what he's about in a Lions jersey. He hadn't been able to do that before because he had the likes of Johnny Wilkinson, Stephen Jones, Neil Jenkins, all fantastic 10s during their peak. And they were during their peak when Ron Gara was at his. Now is finally where he is playing his best rugby. Johnny Wilkinson was no longer in the picture. Stephen Jones, he had just beaten him out in the Six Nations. Yet... He didn't get as much awaited start. He got the captain the midweek team, which of course is the kiss of death to any Lions player. Rory Best has said so himself in the past. It's like, oh thanks, but that means I'm not starting. Uh, Stephen Jones got to be the pick. And he comes on to try prove a point in the second test uh, to try win the game. 75th minute, he makes that famous mistake of where he does a Gary Owen. Mo- I believe it's Mornay Stain who's able to catch it and then Ronald Gar goes up to chase to defend to be able to win the ball back but ends up giving away a penalty which then causes South Africa to have that long range penalty that stain slot again very familiar sounding it's as if it happened again and thus it caused the Lions to lose that series where it was on a knife edge probably one of the better series that's ever happened in terms of competitiveness between the two teams and exciting rugby being played he had never been able to give the best representation of himself for the Lions that was just how it fell for him during those years. He was unfortunate to be behind world class players at the start and he was unfortunate to be against a 10 that Gatlin knows and trusts at that point to be able to get ahead of him and then going on and making the unfortunate errors that he did. But of course it goes on. He is now very clearly one of the senior players in the squad. Everyone's now talking about the new kid on the scene of Johnny Sexton. Now the pressure is firmly on Ron Lugar to try keep his place. Goes into the Six Nations but he, and he started vehemently but he was benched to rest. He still had a 100% kicking record during this Six Nations. He had been rec- recognised by the Heineken Cup itself of being one of the most influential players of the last 15 years due to his record points haul, winning it twice, being one of the most prominent members of a very successful and feared Munster squad. He crossed the 2000 point mark for Munster itself in this season and he was able to get his 100 cap for Ireland while also producing another very casual crossfield kick to Tommy Bow to score against England but this was also the year like I said Sexton was coming into prominence. George Hook an Irish pundit if you are unaware generally known for saying contrarian things and being a cranky man but he was saying that O'Gara is absolutely playing for his Irish place now. And O'Gara throughout this point in time was able to respond in such a way of saying like he is well aware of Johnny Sexton being on the scene and he's well aware more than one player have to do this job but he was obviously anxious about it in terms of saying things like he's getting an opportunity but I'm the one that has to lose out. But this is just the current point of his career that he's dealing with and we've obviously seen what kind of player Sexton has grown to become over the last 10 seasons. And then 2011 comes along, another year older, another year for Sexton to develop. It is getting tougher and tougher out there. There is more and more speculation around him and is he retiring soon? What's going on in his career? But he started proving it wrong again in what was now becoming his competition of the Heineken Cup. After 41 phases at the end of the game in the 85th minute against Northampton Saints, scores a drop goal to win the game. The next week against Castro's 82nd minute drop goal to win the game. He clearly still has it. He still has the ability, but maybe the physicality was leaving him. But an important point to know about Ronald Garrett, as you've seen throughout this, he was known as a kicker. He was known as a passer, playmaker. He was never known as a defender. He was able to soak tackles, but he would never be able to make a dominant one. That is why when in that Leinster semi-final, when he handed off Malcolm O'Kelly, that is when you know you're going to have a bad day because Ronald Garrett just was not a physical beast. And he didn't have to be because he was so smart in the way he played the game. He was so incredible at possession kicking, defensive kicking, place kicking, drop goals in terms of passing off both right and left, just playmaking. He was one of the most perfect tens bar the physicality. But he didn't need it. He was such a good player around those things that that's what he based his game around. He didn't base it being on a hard runner and you don't want your ten to be running into contact all the time anyway. So it didn't cause much of a fuss. But that season they had also lost to Toulon which was the qualification game to get to the quarters. It caused questions 
questions around his future in the game is because he he had stated after that game that he wants to give up to be honest he doesn't want to play rugby anymore so you can see how there was some sort of speculation about him in the, at this point in his career he's 33 at this stage and it, rugby is a physical game so we're starting to question whether he is capable of being a leading 10 anymore but Munster continued to do well in the Magners League as it was called at that point because they end up reaching the final and beating Leinster in the final to that year so the war of the 10s continues where now Ron Lugar has beaten Johnny in another final and not only did they just beat a Leinster team they beat a Leinster team who were Heineken Cup champions that year and also during that season he picks up another personal accolade of reaching 100 caps for Munster in the Heineken Cup which is he was only the second player to do at that stage and the first player to do it was John Hayes 2011 Six Nations rolled around and then Ireland really had an opening day to forget where Italy had almost beaten them for the first time in Six Nations history Sexton had started the game but then O'Gara had to come on to be able to save it he ended up scoring a drop goal in the 78 minutes which enabled us to actually go out of that game with a win over our heads this was part of the continuing decline of Declan Kidney as coach comes up to the game against France Sexton is still starting we end up losing the game in the end and then come to the Scotland game where Ron O'Gara gets his start of the Six Nations and he ends up getting man in the match while scoring a try and actually breaching the thousand points barrier for Ireland in that game and not only that in that season he was able to come off the bench against England which would help prevent them from winning a grand slam that year so he's a very integral part of that team and roll along the World Cup again obviously he gets picked to be selected but Sexton also gets to go but now Sexton's the favourite to start nearly every game but to put a spanner in the works he plays against Italy during the group stages gets man in the match and he ends up playing very well against opposition teams Johnny picked up a bit of a knock during during these group stages which is why Ronald Garrett gets handed his start and then against Wales in the quarter final when we qualified this is where the issue started this is where people were saying maybe Sexton should be starting there was the clear red versus blue camp going on in Ireland about who should be starting team obviously we all know how Ireland get on a quarter finals and we end up losing which caused it a bit more of a rupture this caused Deccan Kidney's management to just be done with Ireland weren't moving forward anymore with him even though it was a dodgy quick tap and go try from Mike Phillips that should never have been allowed and we would have won that game by miles if that never happened never mind that we lost by more than 10 points who cares it was all about the momentum of the game at the time and despite what he said in previous years he continued to play on next season in January 2012 he became the most capped Heineken Cup player in the history of the tournament and he became the all-time cap leader for Ireland in the Six Nations continuing to come off the bench for Johnny Sexton although there was to be no silverware for him that season and then comes the 2012-2013 season which in turn turned out to be the last year of his career with Munster he ended up winning nothing in the domestic league or the Heineken Cup and ended up losing to Clermont in the Heineken Cup knocking them out with Ireland he had a highly disappointing campaign especially in his final game of his career against Scotland on his 128 cap for Ireland he ends up coming off the bench for then Paddy Jackson at the time he'd, he'd been passed out by two out halves in Ireland now at this stage and he came on as a steady hand as Paddy had been struggling with the game management throughout because he was a brand new kid on the scene at that stage he came on and he went to play a play that had been continuous throughout his career which was the kick pass he tried to kick it across to I believe Rob Kearney was standing out there but ended up miss hitting it completely going to a Scottish player ended up putting us under massive pressure Scotland pushes back then he tries to clear it it doesn't make touch now Scotland end up winning a penalty kick it end up going on to win the game and there was a quote during his career that Ronald O'Gara had said that people remember you for your last few performances and they got to be as good as your peak performances and unfortunately for him the one that stuck in the memory is that final game against Scotland but we should not hold Ronald O'Gara to his own standard of that quote we should hold him to what he did previously throughout his entire career consistently kicking his points consistently dragging Ireland to where they shouldn't really have been standard setter bringing Munster and leading them to two Heineken Cups and never mind playing in the other two finals that they'd lost he'd never been tempted to leave and he obviously why would he at that stage despite Munster maybe dipping in the later stages of his career when he could have go off to get a bit of a bigger wage as 
he would have so rightfully deserved especially at the money they would have been on at these stages throughout the career he would not have earned massive wages throughout his entire career and someone who was quite clearly a big rugby brain he would understand the game completely and he would have had to have to be able to get through the professional game with people constantly trying to be physical with him due to being such a not physical style of player and it's not that he was quick either he was just so clever with ball in hand that no matter what move the opposition would try to make he was able to counteract it with what he had planned but unfortunately the body just isn't as always able to keep up what the mind wanted to do the play may have worked two years ago it may have even worked a season before and Rob Kearney catches it and we're able to counter attack because the game was opened up there on the wing they had all bunched in it, I've watched the clip back it would have been the correct move if it had come off and do you think Ronald O'Gara he would be the guy you choose to be put in that situation but unfortunately it didn't unfold in that fashion so unfortunately he had to close his career out with such a downward note but that would not be the end of him in rugby itself he then quickly moved on to become a coach a defense coach at that and he moved to Racing Metro where he just recently followed Johnny Sexton who had obviously been pressing him close for the last couple of seasons of his career and now he gets to work with him and to start impart some knowledge that Ronald Garza obviously built up throughout his entire career so after they became best mates in Racing he then moved on to Crusaders for two years as coach where a couple of interesting things had come out of that where Ronald Garza himself has actually said that that's where he learned that it's about connecting and getting the best out of people and for that to happen they have to know you first that was something that Scott Robertson who is still the main coach at Crusaders after constantly winning everything these were one of the main things that he would take from his time there that it's not just about knowing everything you have to get on with everyone as well you have to be able to talk to him understand him you have to care is a big thing that I see in a lot of Ron Regarry interviews is that he has to care about the people which is something that seemed to maybe be a bit detached in the past with the way people had admitted the Warren Gatland acting and being treated by the RFU. Declan Kidney then in the face of dropping him he'd never really put the arm over the shoulder about it I'm sure that conversation has to happen a thousand times but with players like Ronald O'Gara surely you would give a little bit of more emotion but it felt like from every interview and every interaction of those times it didn't feel like that that was happening so now he's gone down to the southern hemisphere which he admitted himself he felt like they were world class when he played against him so he's trying to figure out what was so world class about him so obviously this job pops up he goes down and this is what he gets they connect on a personal level much more than what they did or used to in the northern hemisphere this could have all easily changed by now and an important point to have seen during this part of his career where Ronan had previously experienced people being injured and this being the end of the world and your best player now can't start or your roster has to change or new players coming in or transfers are taking away your best players and these new inexperienced guys are now having to play for your team. He saw this as a negative where Scott Robertson actually saw this as a positive. The way Scott put it was I don't know if I see these things differently but I'm just a natural optimist. I generally see the opportunity and stuff. So what he's talking about is the fact it's not that these guys are going to miss out it's not that Dan Carter at the time is injured or Richie McCaw or whoever's down at Crusaders at this time it's not that these guys are injured it's that these new guys get a start and we get to see what they're about we get to see them at the professional level we get to see them express their talents on the field whereas Ronald Gower is coming along the side of oh no we've just lost our best player which is something very interesting and I hope he's able to bring that back throughout his career as now he's moved from there as assistant coach to now be head coach despite being really highly rated down there and imparting knowledge on defensive systems and, and all that good stuff and different kind of tactics come from the northern hemisphere down there and we've seen how Crusaders have dominated over the last few years which he has had some part in he has now become head coach of La Rochelle somewhat middling club when he first joined who are now challenging for titles with really talented players and challenging for Heineken Cups as well where he had seen immense disappointment in losing both those finals to a Toulouse team who now have Intimac and upon two of some of the best players in the entire world so it's not exactly a negative that he lost that it's more looking at the positive of that he got that far now he doesn't seem to take it that way in interviews where it's like no there's no point in celebrating we lost but you can see the effect he's had around that club never mind him being able to reach that far but players like Aldrich, Rathes, Skelton 
all improved massively underneath him and then other players who who wouldn't have been renowned names like Rathez himself end up getting caps Bryce Doulan came to La Rochelle end up getting caps for France Skelton after leaving Saracens there was a big worry about his fitness still whereas they were able to get him fit and lose a couple of kilos and he played some of the best rugby he's had of his career and even end up getting exceptions to go play with the Australia squad again and more players are now arriving due to and there'll be there's no doubt about it due to the coaching style of O'Gara who obviously takes great joy from getting to know players and getting to understand what they're about and figure out what's good for them because there's no way you're going to be able to get through fitness to Will Skelton's head without understanding how to connect and massive French players who have got consistent caps are, are world class players like Jonathan Dante the centre is now joining the likes of La Rochelle and there's a couple of other big names that have joined recently there's no doubt in my mind that the aura that he brings the experience he has the 130 odd caps throughout his career has led to these players wanting to come to the club and I can only see that continue over the next while we can very excited to see how far he can take this club because it's a club that we don't necessarily attribute to success we're used to here in Stade Francais, Racing Metro, we're used to Toulouse, Toulon, Claremont we're used to all these teams, but La Rochelle have never been on the tip of the tongue, but hopefully Ron O'Gara can bring his winning mentality to that club. And it looks like it is working, which leads us to the future. And what do I want? What do you want? What does, in general, the Irish public seem to want? There's recently been calls with Johan van Graan actually stepping down as Munster coach. At the end of the year, he chose to end his contract uh, early and join Bath for his sins. So there was always there was always going to be a rumour that Ronald O'Gara could possibly come to join Munster, but he had said so himself that he does not want to go back to the home club while there's people he knows there. He feels like he won't be able to effectively step into a coaching role rather than still feeling like one of the teammates. He doesn't know if he'd be able to do the job and he would like to go learn from, from different foreign clubs to get more aspects of it since he spent his whole career basically under Munster and Declan Kidney so he wanted just to get more knowledge from other places which is fair enough so it's unlikely that he will want to come to Munster and then there's always the future of the Irish head coach because currently we have Andy Farrell, Paul Connell's in that coaching ticket like a very good coach and is it possible we'll have a Ron O'Gara, Paul O'Connell combination as head coach of Ireland? It looks like that's where the pathway has taken us. And with how successful his teams have been, it's not exactly out there that that will be IRFU's long-term vision, even if they haven't spoke to him yet. Maybe New Sephora, who is the head of operations basically in IRFU, has that five ten year plan laid out where if Ron O'Gara does so well then we're looking at a possibility of a head coach and that's not a bad thing it is nice to see an a Irish rugby legend such as him be able to even be one of even be talked about for one of these roles without a lot of people disagreeing turning it down the majority of people agree that Ron O'Gara is a great coach but not everyone agrees on the timing at this minute we will definitely see him in Irish Shores come the future unless something ridiculous happens and he falls off a cliff but we just can't see how that's going to happen his rugby brain from when he was playing to now it, it's so evident of how he was able to become such a good world-class rugby player without having necessarily the physical attributes your Dan Carter, your Bowden Barrett, your Johnny Sexton has and still being talked up as one of the best out halves the world has ever seen and you can disagree with that statement all you like of course you can comment down below how ridiculous you think this is but to sum up I really do think that Ronald Garrett should be looked at as one of the legends of Irish rugby and world rugby in terms of what he was able to do he had been record points Score, record Northern Hemisphere point score in a battle consistently with Johnny Wilkinson and Dan Carter for those titles and we look at them as the pinnacle of the out half position why shouldn't Ron O'Gar be up there in terms of Ireland it can be overshadowed by the fact we now have Johnny Sexton who is of course a fantastic rugby player in his own right winning world play rugby player of the year but there's no question in my mind even as a Leinster man of how influential Ron O'Gar has been for Irish rugby in terms of taking us from the amateur era and taking us into the professional era having a world-class 10 at the helm especially the partnerships he created with your likes of Shane Horgan your Gordon Darcy Peter Stringer 
all these players that he created such a tight relationship with and played with so much he just knew instinctively where these players were going to be evidence can be seen with cross fields that he was able to do for Shane Horgan and Tommy Bow the, the partnership him and Stringer had was undeniable it was the Darcy O'Driscoll of out halves due to them playing week in week out with each other all the time and it is so important which is why we always have what seems to be a want in this country for our halfbacks to come from the same club and our centre partnerships to come from the same club it just feels more comfortable and they just get to know each other a lot better unsure if in other countries that is the preference as well but it seems like a very big thing in Ireland so I hope you enjoyed this video it's a bit more long than usual of course you can comment down below what you think of it hopefully it didn't bore you too much hopefully you learned some things about Ronald Gary that you didn't realize was actually true like just how much points he scored he was like he is still record point scorer for Ireland he is still top six nations point scorer of all time He's on the list of world top point scores up there with the likes of Neil Jenkins, Johnny Wilkes, and Dan Carter. And he's leading he was leading caps for Ireland rugby until Brian O'Driscoll passed him out. And that's not necessarily a bad person to be overtaken by. If you want me to do this long form video on someone else, I'll leave that person down below and I can go through their career and see the important points, hit on it, and just put it all out there. Other players, of course, from different countries would be interested to do. I have my own list of who I'd like to do uh, from different countries. This will be the last player from Ireland I do in a while. I won't just stick with the one country. Uh, I'll be back with other kinds of videos. If you're new to the channel, of course, I do just rugby style videos, whether it be editing, long form, player explanation videos, top fives, uh, URC, that's the, where my club is, so that's the league I watch the most, and of course international stuff from Six Nations and all that good stuff. If you want to watch that kind of content, of course subscribe to the channel here, like the video if you enjoyed it, or dislike it if you don't, I don't get to see them anymore, uh, comment down below what you think of it, and of course I'll see you next time. Good luck. Think of all the tens that are... <laughs>